Hello, welcome to post-colonial space. I'm Masood Raja and as you can see I am outdoors today because I'm visiting Jenny, my wife, who is staying with her parents and this is Ohio River Valley. Behind me is Ohio River and across the river is West Virginia and the town is called Sardis, Ohio. So I have very limited resources here, but someone had posed a question on one of the videos, I think on Foucault, and they had asked a question about whether or not the concept of governmentality can be applied to an educational system. And I think this question came to me from uh, Indian occupied Kashmir. Uh, I apologize if that term bothers you but that's how I see it. Uh, so before I answer that question, I think governmentality isn't the right concept for it. If you go with disciplinarity, that might be more important. But here is the distinction between disciplinarity and governmentality. The concept of disciplinarity belongs to early Foucault, right? Which we call the archeological phase of Foucault. And governmentality is late Foucault, right? History of Sexuality, Volume 1, 2, and 3. And the distinction is that in disciplinarity, what Foucault is trying to trace is how power and discourse shape human bodies, individual bodies, right? And in governmentality, he goes on to then talk about how larger concepts and discourses shape societies, right? Like what What's the role of census? What's the role of designating a group, a whole group as deviant and all? So if you go by disciplinarity, then you can read how education shapes the body and the mind as well, right? Mind being housed in the body. And there is clear writing from Foucault on that topic. If you read Discipline and Punish, right? The whole discussion of the French boys' school, which was a penal school, I think it was called Mitra, right? I could be wrong. My French, of course, I don't know any French. And in that, he talks about how that school in which children or juveniles were sent to be reformed, not only regulated their everyday experience, not only minutely controlled their lives, but in the process of doing so, it also shaped their souls to a point that they got so married to the system, they got so invested in the system that they didn't know any life outside of it. That even when the school is abolished, right, they themselves had become prisoners of the system, right? So keep that in mind. So if you wanted to apply it to a system of education, and wanted to use Foucault, then you could see how a curriculum is designed, what kind of human subjectivity does it develop, how is it regulated, what kind of rigorous examinations, because examinations then shape the consciousness that approaches them, right? If it is based in just rote memory, that's the kind of person you will create, right? who would memorize the answers. If it relies on specific answers to questions, then you'll create a kind of student who wants specific answers, who doesn't want to deal with the nuances of varied kind of answers, right? So if you look at your experience in Kashmir or India, Pakistan, or any colonial educational system, most government school systems encourage us to have precise answers. So sometimes when I post a video on what is literature and I give you my understanding of different ways of how, let's say, Terry Eagleton has explained it, sometimes people will ask me, well, what is the one definition, right? Because they are trained educationally to seek that one answer, right? And we know, based on my experience, that there are never single answers in humanities. So if you left Foucault and wanted still to deal with the role of education in creating human consciousness and even our material existence in the world, I think a better option would be Althusser, right? His 
ideological and repressive state apparatuses, you know, where he offers the educational system itself as an ideological system that doesn't just shape our consciousness and our approach to the world, but also decides our place in the capitalistic society. Hence, enabling the capitalistic society to continue replicating itself. So these are some of my thoughts about how to use the concept of disciplinarity to analyze an educational system. And I think disciplinarity would be a better concept than governmentality. And if you really want to see how Foucault does it, read that section in Discipline and Punish, where he talks about a juvenile prison school system which was meant to create docile human bodies, that's a Foucauldian term, bodies that do what you tell them to do voluntarily even, right? And if you look at educational system anywhere, if it teaches a state mandated curriculum, if it teaches what constitutes good citizenship, what constitutes bad citizenship, then that is the educational system, its curriculum, the teachers, the principles, the whole disciplinary mechanism trying to shape your body into a docile body, a body that would submit to power, submit to the dominant group. So these are some of the thoughts that you can take to use Foucault to analyze any given educational system, right? And maybe you can mix it with Althusser. After all, Althusser was Foucault's teacher, right? Um, so these are some of my thoughts off the cuff. Uh, of course, I don't have my books with me, but I thought I should record a brief response to this query. And uh, I hope this answers your question. Uh, obviously, a video cannot exhaustively cover any topic, so I do recommend that you should read Discipline and Punish. And then maybe some uh, kind of a guidebook on Foucault's main concepts, right? Disciplinarity and governmentality being one of them. What does he mean by docile bodies? What is his theory of the subject itself, right? All of this would then bear upon your understanding of Foucault first, and then using that knowledge to analyze an educational system. So that's all I have. Uh, I love these surroundings. I hope you like the backdrop here. This is Ohio River in my back. In front of me is a small river town, beautiful river town called Sardis, S-A-R-D-I-S. -S. And this is from me to you from Sardis, Ohio. Hope you all are doing well and taking care of each other. Please continue to do so. Stay safe. And as always, I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.